my name is Lexi Jong, and here I like to talk about luxury makeup. And today we have a review that is long overdue. That's the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Collection. So I picked up a few things when it first launched, and you know, I, I thought it would be a very nice line, but I didn't have like super high expectations. And then I really loved what I picked up and I ended up picking up the rest of it. So I have all of the blushes. I have the sculpting bronze shade for my skin tone and one of the highlighters. So we're gonna take a look at all of those. I have cheek swatches galore. And uh, you know, cause we have cheek swatches with just the cream blush. We have them paired with the powder blushes. We have just the powder blushes. So lots and lots of cheek swatches. We've got some comparisons and let's go ahead and get started. So before we go into the details on all of these items, I'm going to first cut to a get ready with me where I created this look. So you can kind of see how all of the items perform. And then we're gonna come back, we'll talk about the products, we'll look at swatches. Right, so uh, we are going to test out all of the Makeup by Mario products. I have on the new Dior eyeshadow quint in Golden Day, and the Surat Perfectionist Primer is already on. We're gonna take the Kokendo Aqua Foundation in shade 012 today. So I'm gonna put this on. And then for under eye concealer today, I am taking the Chantecai Le Camouflage Stilo Anti-Fatigue Corrector Pen, such a long name. And I have shade one in this. So just gonna, this is almost empty. So there's not that much coming up anymore. Just gonna put a little bit here. And I'm just gonna use my finger to kind of blend that out. See if I can get a little bit more. And then I'm just gonna go over that a little bit with the foundation brush, just to make sure it blends evenly. All right, so I pretty much used the full pump of foundation, and we're gonna move in first with the Sculpt Stick, and I have shade Light. Now, this stick here, you know, a lot of times when I use a contour stick, I, or like even a cream bronzer, I like to put it on underneath foundation, but this shade is one that I actually, it, you know, it's not too dark for me. I don't really have to worry about it being too dark. So I can put this on top. And actually I think with this consistency, uh, because it is a little bit more emollient than some of the others that I've used, like the Westman Atelier Biscuit Stick, I think it performs a little bit better on top of foundation than underneath. So I'm just going to put this a little bit here. I'm actually, because this shade is not really cool enough for a contour shade for me, I prefer to use it more as a cream bronzer. So I'm going to take this um, other side. There's a brush here. So because it's more of a like bronzer, I put it a little bit higher up than a true contour shade. You can see the golden undertones in this. Now, when you are using these stick products from Mario, he recommends like a tapping motion instead of a sweeping motion. And you can see that this brush here is angled. So, you know, if you saw me like turning it, it's because I like to, you know, keep the, the higher point, the longer end on the higher part of my face and, um, you know, the shorter end on the shorter part. So uh, one issue that I do have with these is this one, you know, the brush, you can see that putting it on and getting the bristles in without bending could be an issue. I have to say I haven't had any issues with bent bristles yet, but I do often, you know, need to be careful to make sure they're going in after I've used the brush for a bit. One of the great things about these 
is that the brushes come off for cleaning. And you can see the little mechanism here. I know it's like hard to see the black on black, but it's like a little L-shaped one. So, um, you know, there's like little grooves inside here and you can just kind of twist this on. So down and over and it twists on. You can hear that little click. And then I like to go in with the self sculpt bronzer. I have shade light. Now I feel like this and the contour stick are pretty similar in shade. So I really just use this to kind of top it off. And I am using the Omnia Gold powder brush right now, which I really like to use for um, cheek products. So just a little sweep here. And again, I don't really bronze all over my face. Um, you know, even though I'm kind of going through those motions, I have very little on my brush because it just, it's not natural on me. All right, so there is the powder bronzer on top. And regardless of, you know, the actual product itself, I just, I like setting the cream stick with the powder. I haven't had longevity issues with the cream sticks by themselves or anything like that, but I do think it just looks a little bit nicer. There's just like a little je ne sais quoi, and I feel the same way about the cream blushes with the powder blushes. So let's take a look at those. Okay, so we are going to go in with earthy pink, and I'm just going to do a few light dabs here. And, you know, you can go in with this stick. And then I do like to kind of go over it a little bit with my foundation brush. A lot of times I don't always do that, especially if I have used the contour stick in advance. But we're just going to add a little bit here. So I'm just kind of stamping over it with the foundation brush a little bit just in that stampy motion. I don't want to disturb any of the actual bronzer, but I just think it gives it a more seamless finish. By the way, if you're looking at my nails, please excuse them. I just painted them, but because they're a little soft, I haven't gone through and cleaned up the edges. So I know they're a mess. So with these cream blushes, I just think it gives the most natural blush. You really don't see like any sort of line even if you're you like kind of overdo it it's really easy to kind of you know reduce the effects of that they last on me all day and they're very you know creamy and easy to put on so i think they're a fantastic formula i do have demos with all of the shades that i will be showing you and you can see what it looks like when you put on way too much <laughs> Right, so I'm taking the powder brush I used before into the Desert Rose shade. Just going to put a little light brushing of this on. All right, and that's it for those products. Now let's take a look at the highlighter. I picked up the shade Opal and there are other shades, but they all looked very golden. Even like the lighter shades, they, they all looked like varying depths of gold essentially. So this one is like a pure bright white one and I have to say it's really pretty. So this is the Coyoto Premium Series Fan Brush. You can just get a little bit of this on here and you can get like kind of like a very light shimmer. And you can see that that keeps it very natural. Let me show you another brush. This one is the Detail Pro from Sonia G. So just getting some on here. You can see the actual powder on here. And you can see that you can really intensify that a, a lot. But there's something about the way this reflects that it just looks very, it just, blends with the skin very seamlessly. So even though, yes, bright white is not like a natural color, it still looks like it has like a natural finish. Like it, it blends very seamlessly. So I still think that it's just stunning. 
So I'm just gonna match the two sides here. All right, so I'm gonna do my brows and my lips and I'll see you in a minute. All right, so I hope that was helpful. We're going to start off with swatching and we are going to start with the sculpt stick. So as I showed you with the little demo, these do have one end. These are all quick closures, by the way. This has the cream product here. And then the other end has a brush and this is a removable brush. It's really easy to put on and off. It has one of those little L shaped um, you know, clicks. So you just turn and lift, put it back on and turn and you can hear it click. So I really like the fact that you can take this off for cleaning. I think that is something that's really missing with a lot of these dual ended products. So I am very happy with that. Now I have been told that if you look at Sephora reviews, some of these sticks have broken. I have not had that experience, but I also never really extend it further than this to apply the product. So just something to note um, with, with all of these stick products. So let's take a look at this. Now I have shade light and this is what it looks like here. And I'm just gonna kind of blend this and out a little bit so you can see what it looks like blended out. So you can see that this is, you know, they call it like neutral, but it's really warm. You can see that there are some golden tones in it, but it's not as warm as other products that I have purchased in the past. But in my opinion, it's too warm for a contour shade for me. It's really more of a cream bronzer shade. So a few comparisons, we have the Westman Atelier Contour Stick in Biscuit, which I love this shade as well. And you can see that they do look fairly similar when you have it kind of built up like this. But look at this when you blend it out, you can see that the tones of it are going to be different. The Biscuit is definitely cooler in tone than the Mario. So you can see there's like a little bit more of like that cocoa brown hue to it versus more of a golden hue with the Makeup by Mario. And a couple of other comparisons. This is the new Say Cream Bronzer in Light Bronze. And we're gonna put this here, get a little more of that. So here's this shade. You can see that this one actually looks a little bit more orangey. So this one's more orange, more golden. And then for completion's sake, this is the deep bronze in the new Chanel Tan du Soleil. I do not have the original shade, which is probably a little bit more similar, but you can see like the tones of this are gonna be a lot more red and they're cooler in tone than the Makeup by Mario as well. It's more like a redder version of the Westman Atelier stick. It is warmer than the Westman Atelier stick as well. And just a few product specs on the stick. This is 10 and a half grams or 0.37 ounces, has an 18 month shelf life and it's made in the US. Now, moving on to the Soft Sculpt Bronzer, I also have the shade Light for this. And this is a powder bronzer. And you know, to me, I do find it to be pretty similar. I'm gonna put a swatch right up here. So you can kind of see like that it is fairly similar to the Soft Sculpt stick. It's like a tongue twister. Just make that a little bit of a deeper swatch so you can kind of see that a little bit better where the product is built up. Uh, and you can see that this powder really like shears out easily and gives you a hint of color, but tone wise, it actually is fairly similar to the sculpting stick. Yeah, it, this is the bronzer. So we're going to do a few comparisons of this. Put this down here as well. So here's the bronzer kind of buff out that side. We're gonna take a look at my favorite bronzer, the Gucci in 01 Fair. And you can see that the tone of the Gucci is going to be more red compared to more of a soft golden tone in the Makeup by Mario. This is the Dior. Um, this is the new Dior Forever bronzer in 04 Tan Bronze. And you can see that this shade is going to be a lot more similar. It's slightly redder in tone 
than the Makeup by Mario, but they are pretty similar. They both have more of those golden undertones to them. And this is the Chanel Le Beige Powder in shade 50. And you can see how sure that is. Let me get a little bit more. This one is really hard to swatch, so I apologize, but it goes on very, very lightly. Um, it's something that's really easy to sheer out. I don't think we're going to get a good swatch from that, but you can see that this one also has more of those like yellow golden tones. And then last up, we have Tom Ford Terra, which again is going to be cooler in tone than these. So Makeup by Mario. This is Gucci in 01, Dior in 04. And this is the Chanel Le Beige Powder in 50 and the Tom Ford Terra Highlighter or Bronzer. Now for specs on the powder bronzer, it is 12 grams or 0.42 ounces and it is made in Italy. And yeah, I mean, this one has a two year shelf life. And let's take a look at the highlighter too. You can see that the bronzer and the highlighter do have like the same packaging. This is 4.53 grams or 0.16 ounces. You can feel the weight difference between the two of them. So you can definitely tell when you pick it up. This one has an 18 month shelf life and it is made in the US and it comes in several shades. By the way, the packaging on these are magnetic closure and you can see that it comes with a film on the mirror. There's a little, uh, little tag to kind of pull that off. So there are several shades in the highlighter line. I picked up shade Opal, which is the white one. The rest of them are really a lot more of a golden hue. And you know what, we're gonna put these on my hand here. So this is Opal and you can see that it is a white highlighter, but notice the little bit of gold in there. There's like a soft gold in there, but it's not like super yellow and that's something that allows it to really kind of blend with your skin and look not quite as stark. It, it looks more natural than you would expect from a bright white highlighter. So I think, you know, you can give it a really natural look or you can have a really blinding look with this highlighter. And it is very, very finely milled. You can see how small the shimmer particles are on here. It's really nicely done. So I don't have a lot of white highlighters, but we're going to look at the few that I have. So first, this is the Burberry Essentials Glow Palette. This is the light to medium, and we have, this one's the pink highlighter, and this one here is white, and it's just called white. So we're going to look at this one here, and I love this palette, love this highlighter, but you can see the difference in how these blend out. So the Burberry is more of a true white and instead of having like a golden reflect, it's actually more of like a whitish pinkish reflect to it. It's really more of a true white. You can see that the Burberry is going to be a little bit more blinding as well. And then this is the Guerlain Meteorites Pearl Dust Palette. This looks white, but it's really gold. So let me just show you that. And it's actually, um, I think it's called pearly gold, but look, you can see how gold that actually is. So those are really the only highlighters that I have to compare this with, but you can see next to the Burberry how much warmer the Makeup by Mario one looks. And even you can see as I'm bending how parts of it seem to disappear and blend with my hand and you don't see quite as much of that white. So I just, I think it's a really fantastic highlighter. All right, so we're gonna start off with the powder blushes and these do have the same type of packaging as the highlighter and the bronzer, but you can see that they are smaller. These are made in the US, they have a two year shelf life and these are 4.4 grams or 0.155 ounces. And again, we have the mirror here with the little label that peels off and there is a magnetic closure. This first shade here, this is called Mellow Mauve, and I think that this is the most versatile shade. Next, we have Desert Rose. You can see that this is gonna be similar to Mellow Mauve. I actually think Mellow Mauve, that's not really like an apt description. 
Uh, we'll talk about colors after I swatch them all. This one here is Creamy Peach. Poppy Pink. Sorry, I have a little bit of a stain on my arm there. And Wild Berry. So again, we have Mellow Mauve, Desert Rose, Creamy Peach, Poppy Pink, Wild Berry. So as we're looking at these shades, Mellow Mauve, you can see, um, you know, it's a pretty neutral shade, but it's really more of a neutral tea rose to me. When I hear mauve or mauve, I am thinking of a little bit more of that like dusty rose with a little bit of plum in it. And I don't really see any plum tones in it. So, um, you know, to me, it's a little bit more of a pink or rose shade. Desert Rose here does have some brown. It's kind of like your brown rose shade there. And then Creamy Peach, this one is like a true peach shade. Poppy Pink is gonna be your bright, more bubblegum pink. A uh, little bit more like a, a brighter carnation pink. And then Wild Berry is gonna have more plum with some brown tones to it. So for Poppy Pink, I wanted to compare it to the shade Pink Peony from Sisley. This one is a little bit more of a softer pink shade. You can see it's a little bit warmer in tone, but they do have a similar vibe to them. But the Makeup by Mario is gonna be cooler in tone. This one here is Sisley Rosewood. I'm gonna put that here with Wild Berry. You can see that Rosewood is going to have more of that plum tone to it, and it's gonna be a little bit more vibrant. This is Chanel number two, Rose Bronze. And I'm just gonna put this one up here at the top by Mellow Mauve. So you can kind of see what the tone looks like with these others. All right, and this is Chanel number 71, Malice. And this one, you can see it's kind of like that pinky peach shade. I'm gonna put that right here so you can kind of see this one again is Makeup by Mario Creamy Peach. You can see that Malice is going to be more of a coral. This is Chanel 68 Rose Ecran. And I'm going to put this one right here as well so you can kind of see that one. And again, this one here is our Chanel shade. This is Desert Rose. I mean, Mellow Mauve, and this is Desert Rose. So you can see that it is going to be a little bit rosier than Desert Rose, but they are similar. And then this is Chanel Jersey. So let's put Jersey, we're gonna put that right here. You can see the Jersey is a little bit more brown, but this is Makeup by Mario's Desert Rose. It's a little bit rosier than Jersey, but they do have a similarity there. And this is Chantecaille Emotion. This is the B shade. And we're gonna put this one, I'm actually just gonna have to go down here. This is Emotion, which is kind of a peachy shade. And let me show you the Creamy Peach. So here is Creamy Peach from Makeup by Mario. And this is Platonic Blonde from By Terry, which is like the perfect peach shade, in my opinion, for me at least. And just so you can see this, the Makeup by Mario is gonna be a little bit pinker. All right, so those are really my best powder comparisons. If we went through my whole collection, we'd be here all day, but those are the ones that I found were the closest out of what I have. If you have any specific requests, please let me know and I will be sure to include them in an update video. I do have one coming up very soon in about a week or so. All right, now let's move on to the cream blushes, which in my opinion, are the star of this collection. Just like the Sculpt Stick, they do have the removable brush on here. Packaging design is exactly the same. These are a click closure. My one complaint is that it is kind of a pain to put the cap back on the brushes sometimes. Some go on more easily than others, but you know, just so you're not splaying the bristles. That being said, I still haven't had any actual issues with bent bristles, but you know, you kind of have to finagle it, which is annoying. So I do wish there was either a cover that pulled up for that or 
you know, something, um, you know, maybe, maybe the brush head was a little bit smaller or something, but I think a cover would be best. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this one here is Pale Petal. This is going to be your lightest pink shade. Now notice that it does get stuck a little bit going down sometimes. Um, if you are spinning from here and then I just have to actually turn from the base. So just something to note, I haven't had any issues with like broken packaging or anything yet. And these are 10 and a half grams or 0.37 ounces with an 18 month shelf life. And these are made in the U S so same as a sculpt stick. And you can see just looking at this, the creaminess of this. And yet it doesn't feel sticky. So there's a little tackiness right away when you, you know, kind of blend it out, but it's already actually going away. It kind of like fades or goes into the skin. So this next shade here is Dusty Rose. And this one here was the first shade that I picked up actually. And you can see that it is a really nice medium tea rose. Next we have earthy pink and you can see that this one has a little bit more red in it than the dusty rose. It is a bit of a warmer brighter pink shade. There's like a touch of red in there. It's actually very beautiful. And then this one here is soft coral. Now, soft coral, you can see, you can actually blend this one out more lightly um, than you might expect. So just something to note, if you're very fair skin, it is a shade that should work. This one here is raspberry. And you know, this is your traditional bright pop of pink, but you can see that it does have a nice cool tone to it, but it's not overly cool. Sometimes the raspberry shades can be super cool and that kind of, doesn't work as well for people with the warmer undertones. This one is a little bit more neutral. It's still cool, but it's more neutral than others that uh, have a similar vibe. And this one here is Plumberry, which I wasn't sure if this was gonna work for me or not, so I almost didn't get it, but I decided to go ahead and take the chance. And it's actually this really beautiful like wine shade. So from the top here, we have the uh, Pale Petal. It's a Pale Petal, Dusty Rose, Earthy Pink, Soft Coral, Raspberry, and Plumberry. All right, so we are going to start off by looking at the Westman Atelier blushes. And this is the petal shade, which you can see is going to be warmer in tone than the Makeup by Mario. Okay, so Pale Petal, this is the Earthy Pink. It's almost like a cross between the two of them, but softer in color. This one here is Pop It from Westman Atelier. And uh, let's see where, how I can get this in here. I'll put this here. Okay, and you can see that Pop It, uh, as I was talking about these bright pops of pinks before, this is going to be cooler in tone than the Makeup by Mario. You can see the difference between those. There's a little bit more like purple in the Westman Atelier. This one here is Doo Doo, which I'm gonna put this down here. It's definitely a lot lighter than the Plumberry, but it does have a similar vibe. You can see it's gonna be warmer in tone than Plumberry, but if you look at them kind of brushed out, they do look fairly similar. Just a few others to look at. This is the Merit Cream Blush in Raspberry Beret. I am running out of room here, um, but this is really more of a plum raspberry. And you can see that that is gonna be closer to the Westman Atelier shade in Doo Doo than it is to the Plumberry. It doesn't quite go with any of the Makeup by Mario shades. And then this is the Shiseido Whipped Blush in number seven, Setsuko. And I'm gonna put this one right here. Get a little bit more of that. And 
can see that the tone doesn't quite match up. This is going to be a little bit redder. I've got a little bit more clay in it, but its closest match is going to be the earthy pink. But you can see that it is more, more clay. So this is earthy pink and this one is soft coral. And then one more quick comparison. This is the Clay de Poe Cream Blush in number four, Perfect Peach. This isn't really gonna go with any of these, but I do wanna just show you the comparison. We're gonna squeeze it right here by the soft coral. All right, you can see it's gonna be a lot more nude than any of these, but I just wanted to show you the texture. Now, real quickly, if you have any specific comparison recommendations, let me know. I do have some other Westman Atelier cheek shades but they just really don't match with these so i didn't want to feature them here today but i did want to talk a little bit about the texture now a quick comparison of these sticks obviously the westman atelier packaging is more more luxe you've got heavy duty you've got a um, magnetic closure these are made in italy and they're 0.21 ounces or six grams with a 18 month shelf life. Whereas the makeup by Mario, again, is 10 and a half grams or 0.37 ounces. So you are going to be getting not quite twice the amount of product in the makeup by Mario. And they have an 18 month shelf life and they're made in the US. This has a click closure with the removable brush. Definitely great for traveling. This is heavy duty, magnetic, and you can see, you know, it's really, you know, a really gorgeous product as well. Texturally, these are going to be different from each other. The Westman Atelier uh, cream blushes, let me see if you can actually kind of see, just putting it on the type of texture difference. This is a creamy formula. However, and I'm just picking a random color here. Let me pick something that is kind of close to this. We'll go with the earthy pink here. And it's a creamy formula, but look at the difference in the level of creaminess between the two. You can see the sheen from the makeup by Mario from that creaminess. It's more balmy on the skin compared to the Westman Atelier, which is going to have more of a matte finish. So that's gonna be one of the differences between them. Uh, as for me, they both perform really well on my skin and they both hold up throughout the day. I have to say I was really impressed with the makeup by Mario holding up throughout the day because it does have that balmier texture going on. I thought for sure that it would fade, but it doesn't, at least on my skin. I do have normal skin to slightly dry. Even in this heat and humidity that we've been having this summer though, it has been holding up with or without the powder blush on top. Now, I do like to top the Makeup by Mario blushes with the powder. Um, you know, it's really just, just a thing I like to do. It's not necessary though. I just, I like the way they look that way. So um, texturally with the others, the Clay de Peau Cream Blush, like the Westman Atelier, is going to be more of that matte finish. And it has a little bit of a drier uh, finish to it than the Westman Atelier does. So definitely a little bit drier than the, the uh, Makeup by Mario. It's not to say it's a dry cream product. It's just one that is a little bit more matte, less balmy. As for the Merit Stick, that one is definitely a very balmy, uh, more, not an oily texture, but an oilier texture than these. So it, and for me, it does last most of the day, but not quite as well as some of these other products. So just something to know about the different textures of these. So I know that the biggest comparison for what I have is definitely gonna be between the Makeup by Mario and the Westman Atelier. Which one do I prefer? Uh, I really like both of them, but I do have to say the Makeup by Mario ha is just like a notch higher than the Westman Atelier for me. Uh, for cream blushes, if I were to rank my favorites, I still, I love my Clay de Peau cream blush and the Makeup by Mario sticks are like in first place, followed by the Westman Atelier. So that's kind of where I am on ranking at the moment. And I've been using the Makeup by Mario products since they first launched. So it's been over a month now. I've been wearing them 
like nonstop to test these. So yeah, that's, that's where I am on the ranking. Now, as for my thoughts on these other items, I would have to say the sculpt stick and the bronzer, I don't need those. I think they're nice. They work well. They perform nicely. They're at a very nice price point. Um, the colors I wish were a little bit cooler than they are, but they do still look very nice on my skin. You know, I, I think they work very well. They do what they're supposed to. Um, but they're just, you know, it's not a favorite for me. I do like them and I do think that they were worth it. As for the highlighter, I have to say I absolutely love the highlighter. I think it is a gorgeous shade. I love how this white shade can be a blinding highlighter or you can kind of buff it out and it's a little bit more natural because it has a little bit of that soft gold touch into it without looking gold. And I really love the way it performs on my skin. I think it's very finely milled. I definitely think it is a great product. Moving on to the blushes, I like both the powder blushes and the Makeup by Mario cream sticks. I have to say though, the star is the cream stick. So I absolutely love them. I love all of the shades. I don't really know if I could pick a true favorite from here. I love all of them, but you know, with my complexion, I tend to lean towards these lighter shades. I use the soft coral a lot, the earthy pink a lot, the dusty rose. Uh, you know, I do like to get the pop of color with the wrap. You know, I, I do use all of them. So, and I, I like all of them. So I would pick up all of these again um, for, for myself, but no, no, you don't need all of these. As for the powder blushes, I do like the powder blushes. I think they perform very well. They look very nice on the skin on their own as well. But let's face it, I have bought so many blushes this year and quite a few great powder blushes. Do I need these? No. Do I like them? I liked them enough to purchase all of them again as well because I started with just one and ended up purchasing them because I really do like the way that they pair with these cream sticks. Um, as for using them just on their own, uh, you know, I would, I would pass for that, not because it's a bad product, but just because I have bought so many other blushes that I think are really great, like the Hermes and the Pat McGrath blushes. So I think that they are on par with those performance wise. So if you don't have any of those, you may want to check out one of these, but I think, you know, they're on par, but I think I would still just pick one of those over one of the powder blushes for that if it weren't for the way these look paired together. Now, have I tried the other brands paired with these? Yes, I have. They also look nice, they perform nicely, but there is just something about using these two together that I personally prefer. So I, liked, I, I like having the Makeup by Mario powder brush blush to go on top of the cream blush. So I, yeah, I'm not sure how much sense that makes, but for me, I think it's worth it to pair with it. Uh, I think it does give it a different vibe. You don't need to kind of set the cream blush in order to get the longevity, or at least I don't, but, uh, you know, I like the way the finish looks and how if I have the cream blush kind of blended out and then just the way the powder can kind of add to it with the way the edges are and so forth. I think it's just a really beautiful vibe. And I just think the powder formula um, just pairs very nicely with these. And I like the texture of it. Uh, you know, it's texturally, I think they feel very similar to the Chantecaille Philanthropy Cheek Shades. So if you have some of those, I, I think they are fairly similar to that. So if I did not pick up the Makeup by Mario cream or powder blushes, but I wanted one to top these cream sticks with, I would reach for my Chantecaille cheek shades. That would be my preference for those. And that's it. So overall, I think this was an excellent launch. I'm very, very impressed. Again, to me, the stars were the cream blush sticks and the highlighter and everything though was a win. So I hope this was helpful. I, would I apologize for the background noise. Thank you so much for watching. And now here at the end, I'm gonna have all of the cheek shades. So we've got those kind of all together and we've got the 
cream blush sticks on their own. We've got them topped and paired with different shades and of the powder blush and we have different applications. So definitely check those out. I, they will all be labeled. And just so you know, on my skin for all of these is the Kokendo Aqua Foundation in 012. And the blush brushes used were the KZ4 from Chikahoto and the Sonia G Classic Cheek. So those were the cheek brushes used for this. Thank you so much and have a great day.
I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I will see you very soon. So have a great day.